Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I have teamed up with Progressive and we're going to be talking about five different driving techniques in order to drive efficiently, how to achieve good fuel economy. So there's really two main factors that are playing a role in what fuel economy you're achieving. First of all, what car are you driving? And second of all, how are you driving? So we're going to be focusing on that second aspect, how you as a driver can change your driving habits in order to achieve better fuel economy. And we're not going to get into the super obvious ones like, hey, you shouldn't have a ton of stuff in the back of your car for no reason that's super heavy and giving you terrible fuel economy. I think most people realize that. Or the dangerous ones like, hey, you should just follow a tractor trailer on the highway because you'll have great aerodynamics. Obviously that's a dangerous and silly idea and you shouldn't do that. Uh, so we're going to focus on ones that are actually practical and can actually give you a real fuel economy benefit on uh, different techniques that you can use while driving. So the first two here are going to sound slightly counterintuitive, but we'll get through them and explain it. So the first one being drive fast when you need to stop, basically keeping your speed as high as possible. And then the second one being drive slow when you need to go. Nice little rhyme there, uh, but basically meaning keep your average speed as low as possible. So looking at this first one here, we've got two different scenarios, a bad scenario and a good scenario, a more efficient scenario right here. So let's say you have a stoplight coming up. Uh, there's two different ways here where we're approaching this. So the first car, it's driving along at 45 miles per hour. It maintains that 45 miles per hour up until it starts to get pretty close to that stoplight. And then it drops down to zero miles per hour and sits there in that stoplight and waits for it to turn green. This is wasting energy because we took all of that energy that we had of the core, that inertia of the core traveling forward, and we brought it down to zero. We put all that heat into the brakes when we could have actually used that to continue moving along. So the other car is approaching this same stoplight and it sees that it's red. So they let off the gas and they slow down to about 25 miles per hour. And then they just sit here at 25 miles per hour until they get to the light. The light turns green at the same time for both of these cars. This one's already going 25 miles per hour. So it doesn't have to accelerate from zero. It's only accelerating from 25. So not only is it more efficient uh, because it's not accelerating from zero up to 45, but it's also faster because once you get to that green light, you're now moving forward forward where this one is, all, is only at zero miles per hour. So when you're approaching a stoplight, you want your speed to be as high as possible for when it actually turns green. Now our second point is drive slow when you need to go, meaning maintain a low average speed. And I'm not saying you should just drive slowly everywhere. Obviously none of us have time for that. But what I'm saying is there actually can be a major difference in fuel economy simply by slightly reducing your average speed. So we're gonna take an example here, looking at a car on the highway traveling at 80 miles per hour versus 75 miles per hour. So as you're driving along on the highway, the amount of power that you need to produce has to equal uh, you know, the resistive forces that you have. So you have aerodynamic drag going against your vehicle and you have rolling resistance in the tires. Now looking at aerodynamic drag, the amount of power that you need to overcome it is equal to the force of that aerodynamic drag multiplied by the velocity of your vehicle. And within the equation for the force of aerodynamic drag, you have velocity squared. So you multiply that by velocity again, you then have velocity cubed for the power needed to overcome aerodynamic drag. What does all this mean? Well, it means that the amount of power you need to produce increases exponentially as your speed increases because the aerodynamic power required is a function of velocity cubed. And so this is just a simple illustration here. Uh, if we were to plug in you know, some numbers here for the same vehicle traveling at 80 miles per hour versus 75 miles per hour, it would need 26.3 horsepower at 80 versus 21.7 horsepower at 75. So we're traveling five miles per hour faster, just 6.7% faster, but we need 21.4% more power in order to do it. So what that means is your fuel economy is going to exponentially decrease as your speed increases. And so you might be saying, but Jason, I don't want to drive super slow, uh, then, then I'm not going to be able to get anywhere. And that's a, a fair point. So, but if you look at the time required to travel 100 miles, whether you're traveling at 80 miles per hour or 75 miles per hour, at 80 miles per hour, it takes 75 minutes. At 75 miles per hour, it takes 80 minutes. So you save five minutes, uh, but you use significantly more fuel. If you do a two day road trip and let's say you drive 1200 miles, you drive for 16 hours rather than driving for 15 hours. So as you start to get into these longer distances, yes, you know, an hour is a significant amount of time, but you know, you're splitting that over two days. Perhaps it's worth it to you if you do want to save that fuel economy. So you can save in fuel economy on me 
quite significantly by reducing velocity because of how much power is required to overcome aerodynamic drag. Now in the case of rolling resistance, it's actually very minor. 80 miles per hour taking just 1.3 horsepower, uh, 75 miles per hour taking 1.22 horsepower. So not a huge difference in rolling resistance, the amount of power required to overcome it. Uh, really it comes down to aerodynamic drag and having that velocity cubed as part of the function. The third technique is engine braking. So in modern cars, if you let off the throttle and you leave the transmission in gear, the engine actually injects no fuel at all. So you're not using any fuel. So you can use this knowledge to your advantage in different scenarios. So for example here, if we are approaching a stoplight and we know that we're going to have to stop, there's too much time uh, that's going to pass, uh, we can't use that first technique we were talking about, we know we're going to have to come to a stop. So if you have this first scenario, uh, you're driving along at 45 miles per hour, you're coming up to that stoplight, you maintain that 45 miles per hour until you get fairly close and then you decelerate down from 45 down to zero. So that whole time that you're driving at 45 miles per hour, you're using fuel, then for this short duration you won't be as you're decelerating but engine braking, and then once you sit there idling, and you're going to sit there for a long time because you got there very quickly, you're going to be continuing to use fuel as you sit there idling, assuming the engine doesn't have start-stop. So then in our other scenario, our car is driving at 45 miles per hour. We know we're going to have to stop at that light, so we just let off the gas immediately. And so we just coast down to 5 miles per hour. We're not using any fuel in doing so. And then we start, you know, you get on the brakes and you bring it to a complete stop at the light and you're not idling for as long of a time because you didn't drive as quickly up to the stoplight and during that entire time you weren't using any fuel. So you're only using fuel once you come to the complete stop there and you start idling, which is less time than you're gonna spend idling in this scenario. So overall, a way better technique to approach a stoplight uh, is to just let off the gas immediately as you start going towards it. Don't maintain your speed to a red light. Another scenario, if you have a long descent coming up, so if you're going to be driving downhill for quite some time, well, if you just simply leave it in gear, uh, not only is this safe because it's putting the heat uh, from decelerating into your engine's cooling system, which is far more capable, it can take a ton of heat uh, versus putting it into the brakes, so you won't overheat your brakes, that's why engine braking is recommended going downhill, but you also won't be using any fuel uh, if you have it in gear and you're using engine braking to decelerate or maintain your speed as you go down down a hill. Now speaking of hills, our fourth tip is how to efficiently drive over small elevation changes. And the rule is very simple, slow up, fast down. So in our first scenario, not doing the ideal thing, uh, so we're driving along at 45 miles per hour, we come up to a hill, we maintain that 45 miles per hour up the entire hill, and doing so of course requires a lot of fuel because you have to fight against gravity to go up the hill. You're at that 45 miles per hour, then you come back down and you're using your brakes to maintain yourself, your speed at 45 miles per hour. So you're wasting the energy you could be getting, you know, free acceleration basically here from gravity. Yes, you had to work to get up there, but then you could use that gravity to overcome uh, some of the fuel that you've lost uh, to bring you back up to speed. But instead you're using your brakes because you're already at the speed limit. So in this scenario, you're doing everything wrong as far as an efficiency, uh, an efficient way of getting over this hill. The alternative, if you're driving along at 45 miles per hour, you see a hill coming up, you let off the throttle, perhaps you still maintain a light throttle, or you just simply engine brake, and you use inertia to get you up to the top of that hill. Now you've slowed down, you're only going 25 miles per hour now, well below the speed limit, but now you have this long hill to bring you back up to the speed limit. So you come back down, and gravity helps accelerate you back up to the speed that you were at. Uh, by the bottom, of course, it's not a perfect exchange, maybe you're at 40 miles per hour, or something like that, and you use some light acceleration to get back up to the speed limit. So in this scenario, you know, you're not, you're either engine braking or using less fuel as you go up the hill, and then you're allowing gravity to accelerate you rather than just wasting that energy and putting it into your brakes uh, as you come down the hill. So significantly more efficient way of going over an elevation change. Now our final point is to shift gears early and generally you want to use light acceleration while doing so. So how do we know this? Well if we look at an engine efficiency curve, most internal combustion engines tend to operate at their highest efficiency at a low RPM and a relatively high load. Load meaning how much throttle are you applying. Uh, so the two rules we get here 
as engine RPM increases, uh, well then our engine efficiency is going to decrease. So we want to shift so we remain in this efficient region. But we're also learning that our engine efficiency is correlated with load and the more load we have, generally speaking, the more efficient it is. So does that mean uh, that you should be flooring it at every stoplight since we know that the highest efficiency occurs at a high load and a low RPM and then just short shift? Well, it doesn't quite work out that way. You don't get to drive faster and get better fuel economy. So here is why. So if you look at two different scenarios here, we're starting at a stoplight and then we're accelerating up to 45 miles per hour and then we're coming back to another stoplight. So as we accelerate here in this first scenario, the bad scenario, going from zero miles per hour to 45 miles per hour very quickly. So we're using high throttle and we're shifting early and we're keeping that engine in that very efficient region. We get up to 45 miles per hour, we stay there and then we start to slow down for that stoplight. And let's say in this scenario our average speed is 35 miles per hour. In our other scenario we're operating, we're at a lower efficiency region, we're operating at a low load uh, but a you know low RPM so somewhat efficient but not as efficient as the acceleration in this first scenario but we're doing so more slowly. So our average speed as we get up to 45 miles per hour and then slow down to that stoplight our average speed is just 25 miles per hour. So if we go back to our first scenarios we were discussing, uh, you want to maintain the lowest average speed possible. Generally speaking, that's going to be the most efficient because you have the least amount of resistive forces as your average speed is decreased. So generally speaking, and yes, there are different circumstances where it could go the other way, but generally speaking, you're going to be better off and get better fuel economy if you have that lower average speed. So you accelerate more slowly, uh, up to speed, and over Overall, maintain a lower average speed and better fuel economy. Now, just one additional thing that I think you should keep in mind is that if you're applying different driving techniques in order to maximize your fuel economy, you should at least be conscious of the drivers around you. So don't annoy the drivers around you. Don't sit in the left lane at a slow speed. Don't slow down way too early for a stoplight ahead if there's a lot of traffic behind you. So use common sense out there driving and apply these techniques where they make sense and where you can actually gain the benefits from them without annoying other drivers. So thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to Progressive for partnering on the video. And if you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below.